Welcome to the first video in my Learn Azure Active Directory Privilege Identity Management video series, where we go super deep into Azure Active Directory PIM. Now, before we go into it, we do need to talk about securing privileged access. I personally believe that this is a prerequisite before we start talking about PIM. So in this video, we're gonna introduce you to the methodology here and the theory behind securing privileged access. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's first agree on what are privileged accounts. These are accounts that have direct or indirect access to your assets within the IT organization, servers, software, et cetera. And if any of these accounts get compromised, get hacked, then that's going to uh, pose a really significant business risk. After all, your admins have keys to the kingdom. If those admin accounts get compromised, the business could literally shut down and it can be a really bad day. And so that means securing these accounts is super important. Uh, attackers, they focus on getting access to those privileged accounts. They go after the admins because they have keys to the kingdom. And they know that's the quickest way to get access to the data and carry out their objective. And so that traditional approach of only focusing on the network security and VPNs and firewalls and that kind of thing as our primary security perimeter, that is a little old school. It's diminished in its effectiveness. As we know, data is now being stored on personal devices, SaaS apps, up in the cloud, USB sticks, you name it. And so adversaries, they're actually really good at obtaining access to workstations inside the network via email phishing and, and other web-based attacks. So again, we have to make sure these admin accounts are protected. Now, when we go to modernize that security perimeter I talked about, we want to look at modernizing it with an identity first. And so using authentication authorization allows us to basically extend that security posture of that traditional network perimeter. And being able to protect the privileged accounts that have access to all these different systems are now in control of this new perimeter based on identity. And you know, it's just something I wanna call out here is that remember, if an attacker gains control of one of these admin accounts, they can use that account to increase their effectiveness of their attack. So this is definitely something that we wanna make sure we protect. That means we have to develop a roadmap to securing privileged access. So phase one, phase two, and phase three of a very simplified roadmap. Now, this roadmap is out on docs.microsoft.com. I'll put a link in the video description. I basically took that document, put it into a PowerPoint here to present to all of you and, and help boil it down for you. So let's jump into this phase one really quick. Let's go after low-hanging fruit. What are the easiest things we could do without impacting uh, operations? Well, let's try to use some separate accounts. If I'm an administrator, maybe I'm a domain admin or a global admin in Office 365, I need to have a separate account for my administrative privileges and a separate account for all my standard end user productivity tasks. I should not be using the same account. I also need to use just in time local admin passwords. So I should not be using the same local administrator password on all of my workstations and servers. Use LAPS, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. I wanna make sure I'm securing my workstation or even using a dedicated admin workstation. And then I wanna make sure that I'm doing identity attack detection. I'll talk more about that. Go ahead and do me a favor, write down some of these URLs you see on the screen, pause the video at any time, and go reference these later because they're gonna be a big help for you. Okay, so when I say use separate accounts, what do I mean? Look, don't browse the web and check your email and do all your day-to-day -day stuff using your admin account. That puts your admin account at risk. If those credentials get compromised, or you click on a, a link in a phishing email uh, using that account, it's game over. So make sure we, we're using separate accounts and consider creating emergency access accounts, break glass accounts as well. And we've got some guidance out there on docs.microsoft.com that will walk you through that. When I say using LAPS, the local administrator password solution, this tool is pretty awesome. So you can go out there and download it from AKMS slash LAPS and this allows you to generate randomized uh, local administrator passwords on those workstations and servers. And then I can go out and, and look those up and reset those as necessary. It mitigates the risk of attackers, attackers stealing the hash of that uh, local password from that local SAM database on that Windows workstation or server. Okay, administrative workstations. Don't use the same workstation you use to check your email and browse the web to do all your administrative tasks as an IT admin. Use a separate workstation. Consider the clean source principle. Whatever machine you're using 
to administer the environment, make sure it's coming from a clean source that's not compromised. And that means deploying things like user access control and even the Windows 10 security baseline to it. Now, also, if you still have on-premises Active Directory, which most of you will, and you will for a very long time, deploy Microsoft Defender for Identity, formerly known as Azure Advanced Threat Protection. This is gonna monitor those on-premises domain controllers, and it's gonna look for on-prem identity-based attacks like what you see here on this screen, such as pass the hash and account enumeration and golden ticket and DC shadow, so on and so forth. This is an amazing tool to go out there, make sure you're monitoring and looking for those types of attacks. Now, phase two of all of this is where I want you to go through and start making incremental improvements to your operational cadence here for your administrators. Meaning, on that privileged ad admin workstation, that PAW, or that secure admin workstation, that SAW, make sure you're deploying Windows Hello for Business using facial recognition, using biometrics, or even a PIN. Deploy MFA for those admin accounts as well. Don't use a text message, use a push notification app, or use a phone call or some other method of MFA. And then number two, again, secure that admin workstation using just-in-time privileges. Use that as well. And we're going to talk more about that when we get into Azure AD PIM later on. Enable Credential Guard. I'll talk about that here in a moment. Review all of your reports, such as the report in Azure AD, to look for leaked credentials out there in the dark web. And then look for lateral movement. Now, when we start to peel this back, when I say require Windows Hello for Business, this is a very simple concept. Most modern PCs nowadays have a TPM chip or a trusted protection module. When I enroll in Windows Hello for Business, it creates basically, in other words, a certificate that gets stored that TPM. So unless you have physical access to that device, it's almost impossible to get that certificate off that TPM chip. And so that satisfies the something I, I know. Now the something I have is my face, my fingerprint, or even a pen. And that makes it just that much more difficult for the attacker to try to compromise the identity there. That's, two, that's actual two-factor authentication at the workstation itself. And then of course, enable MFA using Azure MFA for the admin accounts. Now I also recommend using a conditional access policy to require that, that privileged admin workstation to be, um, to be hybrid Azure AD joint and Intune compliant before it goes to access a cloud resource to make sure it's coming from a clean source. Now, speaking of deploying that PAW, yeah, you heard me right, deploy a privileged access workstation. I know it's a pain. Look, I used to be an admin in a previous life, I get it. But this is gonna save your bacon. You need to make sure that you are coming from a clean workstation that is not compromised to manage the environment. Imagine if somebody installed malware in that workstation or a keylogger or just you know, ransomware or something like that, or you clicked on a phishing link in an email on the internet web browser on that workstation, dude, it would be game over. We need to make sure that you're protecting that workstation you're coming from. So keep that in mind. Just-in-time privileges. I'll talk more about this here in a moment, but giving the users, the admins, if you will, don't give them standing admin access. Let them request admin access when they need it. Enable Credential Guard. This is built into Windows 10 Enterprise. This can actually stop past the hash and past the ticket. Uh, it's basically storing your credentials in a secured place uh, you know, in, uh, in memory, if you will. Uh, and that's, that's really the layman's terms of putting it. There's a much deeper uh, dive I could do on this. Uh, maybe I'll create a video on it. Uh, but the way I like to think about it is, you know, when you go home at night and you park your car in the garage, what do you do with your car keys? Do you put them on the kitchen counter or do you take your car keys and you put them in a safe that's in the closet of your, of your bedroom and then you close and lock the door to your closet? That's like using credential guard. And this could literally stop past the hash or past the ticket. Now, Azure Active Directory Identity Protection, this is part of Azure D Plan 2, this can monitor the dark web for leaked credentials and monitors public places. This could be extremely useful to see if your user's credentials are, are compromised and your admin's credentials are compromised. And then lateral movement. If you deploy Microsoft Defender for Identity, this will actually have visuals. Go, go check out my other videos on Azure ATP and Defender for Identity. I will show you demos where I talk about lateral movement paths. This can be extremely effective in helping you monitor what's happening here. So take a look at that. Now, phase three, this is where we want to improve our security posture for these admins and then go into sustaining operations. We want to implement RBAC. I'll talk more about that in a moment here. We want to lower the attack surface. 
We want to make sure we're, we're again reviewing those leaked credential reports, but we want to force the reset of passwords for any credentials that may be compromised. And then we want to integrate logs with the SIM. So let's talk about number one, review role-based access control. Well, take advantage of RBAC. Don't give all your admins global admin access to Azure Active Directory or Office 365 or Azure. Don't give all your admins enterprise admin or domain admin access in on-premises AD. Use a tiered model, tier one, two, three. Divide up the admins. Don't give everybody keys to the kingdom. Number two, lower the attack surface. Make sure you're not installing baloney on your, on your critical infrastructure, such as your domain controllers and the server running Azure AD Connect. Make sure they have a baseline on it. Check out the Windows Server baseline that's out there on docs.microsoft.com. Harden these things. Make sure they're only being used for what's intended. Don't go out installing a bunch of third-party agents on it. That increases the attack surface. And then finally, integrate the logs with your SIM. Send the, the Active Directory logs and the Azure Active Directory logs to your SIM so you can aggregate those logs and then be able to go back in time if something were to happen. The most important advice I can give you here is number four, and that's using conditional access to force the reset of a password. So if your admin's credentials do become compromised, next time they go to login, we'll force a password reset. Now you're probably wondering, well, can't the attacker reset the password? No, because Password reset in Azure Active Directory requires multi-factor authentication. And there's more on that here on these, these links. Again, pause the video, go back and write down some of these AKAMS links and check it out and go research it. Okay, so this is the, the basic knowledge I wanted to share with you around securing privileged access. Please go out there and consider following this guidance. There's a great Microsoft article that I'll put in the video description that talks way more about this. But I wanted to set up the stage here before we jump into privilege identity management with Azure AD. Okay, folks, this has been the first video. We're going to go into the second video now, giving you an overview and a demo of Azure Active Directory privilege identity management.